All right, well, this is not quite the start that I was expecting. Hey, the boss rooms are back. Uh, let me just do this real quick. <laughs> uh, alpha version, it's back, and it's more alpha than ever. But, oh, right, this whole thing. Yeah, that's the entire sprite sheet in the background. Isn't that weird? So, anyway, hey, boss runes, check it out. So, let's start at the very beginning. When you have nothing activated here, you got nothing. But when you beat the assassin, you get one boss rune now. Slightly increases enemy strength, and the foundry is now a thing, allowing you to upgrade items. And this one allows you to, well, upgrade it past, I think it's just 30 cells for like a plus 25% increase in uh, damage or effectiveness, whatever. But that's not really the one that's of any interest. It's like, that's nice and everything, but no, 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 you would like to have two boss cells. When you have that first one that you got from the assassin equipped, what you can do is you can go and fight the incomplete one, and that he'll drop his own cell. And that increases cell drops, which is useful for the forge, because you gotta upgrade things to cells. Increases enemy strength a lot, which... woof. <laughs> and reduces the number of healing fountains down to half. Essentially, it's every other one that you're gonna be getting a healing fountain at. And then, with three boss cells, having the, well, first two boss cells equipped and then going and being the Watcher. Increases the enemy strength by a lot, increases the foundry level again. Really get some good stuff. Removes the healing fountains. Now that's the toughest bit here. Woof. But increases cell drops more. Now, since this has kind of been a little while coming and I'd like to do, well, you know, a slight better version of the boss runes per se, and I really would like to finish a run. Let's not go full-on hardest mode possible, but just one step down from that. You get a good increase to the foundry level. Man, that background is really distracting. <laughs> you get a really good increase to the foundry level. You get increase to the foundry level. You get difficult enemies. You get more cells. It's like, I'd say you're going to see the pretty full breadth of new... Oh, uh, yeah, you can see the shovel, which I upgraded once here. You get a pretty full breadth of new content here, but also it's not going to be just, like, impossibly difficult. Or at least, well, very difficult. Uh, now, why would I say very difficult? Because at this point now, unlike, say, the stream that I did recently when I tried to do it, when I tried to go at it with every single boss rune equipped, I have something of a plan. Essentially kind of like screwing around with some of the requests that I want to do for, like, you know, single weapon runs. I will take that, though. I always like good aura of laceration. But, like, yeah, I, I've had a, I've had, like, a bunch of requests and stuff for, like, single weapon runs, which I want to start, like, kind of, like, tackling soon enough. And one of them was doing, um, the ceiling turret is the proper name for it. And I was using the ceiling turret a lot more recently, and I realized, actually, it's a really, really good skill. And I think, like, best combined with like the you know I gotta speaking of which I gotta go check up at the shop to see if I can grab one of those but like yeah pretty much what you can do is it has a super huge range it's invincible it can shoot pretty fast do some pretty decent damage uh yeah also things aren't crazy expensive anymore thank god <laughs> and yeah what I think I and what I think it syncs best with I shall just yeah no I'll just take two of these is like a heavy turret here because it's like what you can do is you can stun enemies you know they have like a little bit of a stun it also increases your damage and everything blah 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 but it's like yeah that little bit of stun will allow like ceiling turrets to hit things a lot and also prevent enemies from just like going after you it kind of uh, pro it kind of is very useful as like a meat shield in between you and enemies um yeah sure all right Starting items, of course. But like, yeah, so I found that that's actually a pretty effective way to kill enemies without needing to be anywhere near them. Anywhere near, you know, danger. <laughs> anywhere near anything you could call a danger zone. So that's kind of the build that I'm... Well, that's kind of like the uh, hypothesis I have for like a decent build for doing this. And there's the broken thing. And thus far, I feel like it's worked out. I mean, all I've gone through so far is just good to, like, the Watcher, which 
by the way, can't go really go through the Watcher area because at least when I tried to go into the graveyard, I suppose I didn't try the Slumbering Sanctuary. Uh, game told the crashes, so kind of stuck in classic area here. Yeah, two cells, and that's that extra cell game, you know? It's pretty nice. Ooh, should probably make sure that I get the timed area. Timed areas are... All right. <laughs> timed areas are even more important now because not only do you get, well, you know, extra stats and everything, but they have increased the amount of cells that you get from, like, each one of the little cell containers here, which, oh, thank God, I mean... When you're, like, rushing to the very end of the game, say, game, say the Sepulchre, which I think is the last area that you could possibly get a timed door at, it's just, like, to get, you know, an extra ten cells has never really been worth it. Of course, that's usually not what you're getting. You're usually going for the... Uh, nah. Of course, you're usually not going for that. You're usually going for, you know, the stats you get in there. But now, it's actually worth it, because you get a ton of cells from that as well. Ah, here's another thing. Little boss rune doors. If you have boss runes equipped, uh, say one right here, just shows it. I mean, that's supposed to be a cell, I guess. You can open up these doors, something that has been in the game forever, but never really been... Well, anything you could do much of anything with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Electric Whip, I also think is a very good item, because it lets you attack from, like, Bunch of weirdo locations without needing to be, like, in harm's way a lot of the time. So I upgraded that one to be able to have a stat on top of it. You know, when they say that you get extra cells, they're not lying. You get a lot of extra cells in these runs. But anyway, yeah, I think that if you were going to be doing, like, a run here... Like, one of the things I noticed when I was, like, uh, attempting out to... Every single rune being equipped here was that essentially I think that you could Oh, yeah, they improved what defenders look like so now they don't look Like they're possessed or something Which I always thought was kind of weird, but like you know what everything else is supposed to be like that in this game glowing and bizarre Oh, hi All right but yeah, one of the things I noticed when I was uh, doing, like, full rune runs, ultra hard mode, as I called it, after the uh, after the Binding of Isaac challenge run. You know, the one that was just, like, awful. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, trying that out, I think one of the things I noticed was essentially that... Yeah. That's not good. Okay. One of the things I noticed is that, like, you could probably just throw like less you know just the two boss runes on kind of want to try it but at the same time not really and like go through like beat the game twice by the time that you were able to like beat the game once and hmm. i think i'd like the yeah yeah i think i'd like to get the 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 electric whip more than that Okay. Yeah, you can go through the game twice on, like, a lower difficulty in the same amount of time that it would take to go through a game on higher difficulty. And it would also be, you know, like, lower difficulty and not all that much more. And I think that kind of holds true now. But, hey, I think that Motion Twin also somewhat realized that, which is why they added in, like, the Foundry upgrade levels. To make it instead the... Whoa. All right, then. <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah, I added in, like, the Foundry upgrade levels, which are locked behind doing extra sort of... Locked behind extra layers of difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow I kind of expected the Bombardier to hit me there. I guess not. I mean, overall, I think the difficulty is kind of a difficult thing to get... Wow, that was close. Difficulty is kind of a difficult thing, and I... Ooh. This one requires two cells, which is the exact amount I have equipped. Yeah, if one required three cells, I wouldn't be able to do that one. 
And really, I think I'm okay with that because as far as I can tell, there's not any actual difference between like the cells required to get in and like the actual content inside here. It's just how many you can access. Like, they all tend to contain chests, or shops, or, like, sometimes elite stuff. You know. Ah, uh, nah. I think I can afford that electric lift now, though, which would be nice. Uh, yeah, right over here. And much like areas like the Fog Fjord, you're able to tell what's inside the doors once you kind of open them up. Or maybe always, I don't really, I haven't paid enough attention to that. Um, yeah. Oh, right, that's a starting item. Man, I've been carrying that one around for a while. So difficulty is something of a tricky thing, especially in a game like this, because you kind of want to... Like, I think one of the better ways to do it, which they did do, is... Like, uh, kind of screwing around with, like, the bestiary of each area, so that you have... So that you have like a bunch of like harder enemies in earlier areas and stuff like that. Something that I agree, well, let's say less with is the idea of just like totally stopping you from being able to heal because there are what like two different mutations, I think, that uh yeah, maximum amount of health. Definitely want to get health in this. That's I mean the one of the big things with the changes to scrolls is that. They're planning for you to kind of balance it out. But yeah, like, enemies from different biomes in here is fine. But I think just, like, making enemies tougher, making enemies do more damage, limiting your health options is just kind of... I don't know, I guess you could call it somewhat cheap difficulty. Something I always said with the, like, uh... When I was fighting... Oh, boy. Something I always said when I was... Ah, fighting like the watcher is that it's like there are ways that you can kind of create cheap difficulty and like the watchers um bullet hell pattern is one of those where it's just like there's no real yeah i guess i'm out of here for right now i want to be able to get that uh, time door in the ossuary here but like yeah it's as simple as just adding a bunch of hit boxes which fly out semi randomly over time well yes it's always going with a bunch of deployed stuff and it's like here's the same sort of thing it's like all you got to do to like make difficult to make an enemy more difficult or at least the the working theory i think motion twin is going on here is that you just you know you take the the variable that is the enemy's health and then you like give it times two <laughs> something like that and it's like i mm, yeah i can't really say that it's like that's my favorite way to create like a more difficult situation and probably the thing well the other thing is that you know just also adding way more enemies in an area i think is the worst the the worst thing about like the boss stuff he, about the boss runes here because it's like mm, that's not so much difficult as it is just kind of like overwhelming you which i mean i suppose is some something of a form of difficulty but not one that I would agree with. It reminds me a lot of, like, uh, back in the day, like, uh, Super Super Mario World hacks, where a lot of, like, you know, people, when they're just like, oh, well, this level isn't hard enough, or, like, they had been testing it with save states too much. Actually, that wouldn't be too bad if I was going full... That, that wouldn't have been too bad of a weapon if I was going full on... Um, I was going full on, like, a uh, full rune mode, but, eh, not right now. But anyway, like I was saying, yeah, you see that a lot where it's just, like, somebody, after testing their levels with save states too often, would just be like, oh, this isn't difficult enough, let's put an arbitrary time limit, or let's just add a bunch of enemies to the level, because, you know, otherwise it's not hard enough. Let's let's add a uh, one of those little off-screen bullet bill generators that like makes them spawn in an X pattern on top of this incredibly difficult platforming level. Because come on, you know the the Mario hacking community isn't going to be impressed by this otherwise. And I kind of feel like there might be a little bit of that like same sort of theory here because it's pretty easy just to say like, hey, 
extra enemies. <laughs> now it's more difficult. But, like I said, you know, kind of a, a cheap difficulty. I mean, it certainly does make it more difficult than, like, just a vanilla game, but, eh, at what cost? You know, the funny thing with, like, uh, old-school Mario hacking is that you see, you see, you saw, like, almost the exact same sort of mistakes and, like, the sort of patterns and what sort of, like, levels and everything became super popular and beloved and then kind of became less popular and beloved, like the Kaizo levels, the automatic levels. It was just like a whole little microcosm that you saw repeated in when the during the time that Super Mario Maker came out. It's like I, I think I think it's kind of funny how it's just like ah, oh, just the the weirdest example of uh, failing to learn from history and repeating it. Or maybe not even failing to learn from history, because it's just like, you could have just looked at like what was really popular with like old school Mario hacks and be like, well, time to apply this immediately. Ah, dang shockers. Time to apply this immediately to Super Mario Maker. Anyway, this has nothing to do with anything. So yeah, you get trackers in here, but honestly, I'm so used to dealing with just like areas that are like jam-packed with trackers i.e the clock tower and the sepulcher that's like eh, a couple extra of those dudes here does not really even phase me at all i always get the feeling that motion twin was pretty proud of like uh, how the trackers kind of work because they there are a lot of representations of these guys kind of across levels now at this point and i don't really blame them they are prob they are Aside from maybe, you know, Golem, some of the most difficult enemies that Motion Twin has created for this game so far. Golems may be too difficult in some cases. I mean, I don't really think so, because I've played this game for so long. Ah! Okay, good. That'll work. Yeah, you know, I, I'm still thinking about, like, golems where it's just like, man, those enemies are super hardcore. <laughs> it's like... If you really wanted to put, like, super difficult enemies in every area, just give every enemy, like, the, uh, the golem, uh, the golem grabbing ability. Just like, that would be unfairly difficult to the max. <laughs> yeah, give me the ability to heal, put in the golem grab on every single enemy. Yeah, this seems like one of those more, like, regular sort of areas in, like, a little sub-area here. I wonder if that means I'm going to be getting some uh, cells somewhere, perhaps. I don't know, because I'm still not in... T I still haven't played enough of... There we go. I still haven't played enough of, uh, like bunch of boss runes being active here to kind of say to kind of like recognize what the patterns for levels are so i'm not quite sure what's going on here like for example that little left area there didn't really seem to have anything in it i don't know you know gotta say i've never really been one to use much oh it's just a shop all right well maybe i can get like something <laughs> Uh, I would rather re-roll re in a place where I could get, like, a, an upgrade to. Or actually just finally get the... Okay. Ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> finally, finally, finally. Yeah, I lose out on Poison the Victim, but, like, I want to grab one of these if possible. This one, specifically. I don't think I'm going to be able to, though. Ah, well. Yeah, I guess this does 100% on burning and poison, so not a terrible either way. I'll take it. Yeah, sure. Alright, but yeah, I've never really been one to use turrets too much in this game, but I feel like as... Uh, super hard modes have kind of started to come out here that like i'm more inclined to do so because 
Like, they're very effective for fighting enemies that you want to stay very far away from, which in sort of a hard mode is every enemy. Also, did those trackers just kill themselves? What the heck? Yeah, like for example, that would have been very hard to do with just about any other type of weapon. Also, yeah, by the way, did you see just like it... The ceiling turret is still effective from all the way up there. I have to move the camera and at like the very maximum amount that it can move, still working. Surprisingly enough, that that's exactly why it makes it really effective for fighting the assassin. You can pretty much have constant damage on her all the time because that room does in fact have a ceiling, unlike say the room for, oh hey, unlike say the room for uh, the incomplete one. And yeah, invincible, lasts forever, all that sort of stuff. It's, uh, like, I cannot believe I have overlooked the ceiling turret for so long. It's like, it's actually really, really good. <laughs> sort of reminds me of, like, looking at crow's wings and being like, eh, I don't know. And then realizing it's like, oh, wait, no, this may be one of the greatest skills of all time. <laughs> You know, I gotta say, of the Brutal update, uh, which I think I've looked at, what, every item in, like, a quite a bit of depth at this point? Oh, what, what just hit me? Now it doesn't matter now. <laughs> like, yeah, I've looked at every item that has kind of been new in the Brutal update here, and I think, like, Ice Shock and Crow's Wings, probably the most surprising. They're way better than I thought they would be. And then you had, like, the Ice Crossbow, which I want to be better than it kind of actually is. Ah, it's such a cool concept, but, I mean, really, it's like, eh. Yeah, like, look at that. Wasn't even in sight of me. Yeah, I definitely... And like I said, like, the, the big thing that I had... The big problem that I would have had with the ceiling turret is that it wouldn't have been able to hit the... Eh, what do you got? Piercing is good, but then I kind of lose a plus 100%. So, eh. Dump it. Also, tech note right now, nearly have 200 cells. Which, wow. Cell gain is no joke in this. Uh, looks like that's it. Ah, well. See, this would be about the time when I would say, Alright, I'll take a curse chest. But it doesn't even seem like that's an option. Yay. Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to check one more time because I don't remember exactly how much it was to buy the heavy turret, but I would like to grab that. I would like to grab that for the... for the incomplete one fight, if possible. Also, yeah, another thing with turrets, you can just do this. Nothing can hit you there. Alright, where's a teleporter here already? Yeah, you know, I shouldn't have been discounting turrets so much. Who knew? And I've always favored using, like, uh... Oh, I can actually afford this. Good. Take it right now, then. <laughs> Yeah, I've always been in favor. I've always been in favor of using something like more like grenades with the oil grenade and flame grenade, which is always a really effective combination. Or using like a uh, knife storm, cause I like knife storm a lot. Yeah, obviously, cause oh wait, I don't actually have anything. Usually at this point, I have something that does some sort of. Oh, and I can't reset it. Oh, well, well, whatever. I'll just do that next time. Yeah, I guess I was still thinking that I had the uh, something that did poison or fire. Guess not. Yeah, this is unfortunately going to be the most annoying battle because he, he is not impressed by the big pile of mucus tech that I have going on here. Thankfully, everything else is working out pretty well. 
get that extra damage, not only from the mutation, but also just from the natural... Yeah, not only from the mutation, but also from just the natural uh, increase you get from having a heavy turret. Oh, what? I don't know why I keep throwing down the... I don't know why I keep throwing down the um, ceiling turret. It wasn't really effective there, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh, I think I'm going to be too late for the door, aren't I? Oh, no, not even. Wow, you are given a lot of let with this thing. How about that? 32 cells. When I said that those time doors were getting more and more worthwhile to get, I wasn't lying about that. Hi. Hey, meat grinder, sure. Hooray! Yeah, unavailable until you the forge level isn't high enough. Gotta go on. I go on the next difficulty. Yep. But other than that, I don't know. I'm just keep upgrading stuff, I guess. And this guy and uh the Dr. Eggman shopkeeper here is works just like uh unlocking stuff at the collector he'll just spit out new versions of each one of these items as you unlock them so get prepared to see that right now <laughs> stupid oh that was actually that i didn't realize i upgraded the meat grinder that much oh well time for money <laughs> plus 100 percent on burning targets pretty good but no I have the basic. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I have the basic like setup for items that I want. So yeah, let me reset this already. I want to keep this and this, and I don't know. Yeah, sure. I'm killing enough enemies right now. I can justify using that. Now, Fogfjord does have a time door, which would probably give me, like, gotta be close to, like, 40 cells or so. But Slumbering Sanctuary also has those, like, little doors that are unlocked with the with the AT switch that give you cells, too. And like I said, heavy turret's pretty good against golems, so I'm gonna do that. I also got a decent shield if I decide I want to go, like, a little bit of a parry route. I don't know. There's a lot of... I think there's a lot of good stuff I can do in here. Let's see. This is my the usual like area I like to go to anyway. Yeah, 32 cells there. Not bad. Uh upgrade perhaps? Nah, and I don't really I don't really want to roll for it. I would rather roll for something that would give me a little extra um Oh, sorry about that there. I would rather roll for something that would give me a little extra, like, uh, stats from, like, a melee weapon or something like that. And this'll give me some stats just in general. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I want, I want to keep both of these at kind of the same level so I have the most health possible. Because, well, health, like, you're kind of planned to have, oh, two of these. Okay. Both at 32, that's a whole six... Oh, good. That's a whole 60 extra cells that I get in this area alone. That's pretty good. Along with whatever enemies I kill. Vampirism not cutting it. Again, wait, shouldn't that just be a warp backwards? Like, that's what's been in the other area. Yeah, whatever, anyway. Like, what would that even connect to? Nope, not risking it. If there is one time that I'd... Like, not on super hard mode. Maybe in a normal run or something, but it's like, eh, like I said, I want to finish this run here. And I think cur cursing myself would not be the most effective way to do such a thing. Hey, right, come on. However, that did show that, that uh, the health increase, not a bad idea. <laughs> Working out for me. And also, when I'm not even paying attention, I'm getting health back from killing enemies. Like, look at this, and he's just focused on fighting that turret.
Man, I can't, it's just, it surprised me so much just how good the ceiling turret is. That was weird. What? Oh, yeah. Hey, do you mind? I'm busy. Oh, and he's already dead. <laughs> ah, what a good combo. You take this here. Now, is it the best idea? Because I don't think I get a flask refill after this floor. Probably not, but that's fine. All right. Ah, uh, should I hit the sepulcher? That's the question right now. I don't know. Oh, that was an easy golem kill. <laughs> All right, then. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think that's re that's really the nice thing. That's really the nice thing about having the heavy turret. It just knocks the golem right out of even being able to punch you. Like a one solid hit and he's out of that animation. And even if he does wind it up, what he'll do is he will hit the turret before he hits you. Hey, hey, come on, man. <laughs> okay, well, the ground pound still does pretty effective hits, but, you know. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. Watch out for the ground hits. <laughs> uh, maybe go f I'm actually thinking a little extra health here. Never a bad option. Yeah, do I want to hit the sepulcher or do I want to hit the... You know what? I think I'm just going to go Clock Tower. Clock Tower's fun, and I think it's vertical-oriented. Why? <laughs> oh, boy. Ah, damn it. You're supposed to... Stop that. Stop doing that. Like, how did... How did he even... How did that golem even, like, catch wind of me? I would... Uh, this doesn't even make any sense. Anyway. Uh, whatever. Well, I do want to get an extra stat up. I was just saying that. Ooh, this wouldn't be a bad option. And damage take minus 20%. Yeah, I like that. So anyway, I have no idea how that golem even noticed me to be able to start grabbing me like that. But, oh, uh, whatever. Don't worry about it. The thing I'm more annoyed about is that I lost a flask charge there because I'm not going to be able to heal. Uh, I'm not going to be able to heal up in between rooms just before I fight the assassin. But anyway, clock tower is a bit more vertically oriented, so I think having the ceiling turret works a little bit better. Because, like, you know, you just do this. Well, you were supposed to fly all the way up there. Let, let me just, let me. And then, like, yeah, it's all the way up on the, the roof here. No muss, no fuss. Yeah, broken, but I feel like I'm still going to be okay, because, yeah, I have a good setup for this area. And I think Hokuto's bow is also going to be pretty nice, too. It's been improved since I did my original kind of... Ooh, explosive crossbow. Nah. But yeah, it's been improved quite a bit since I first uh, used it. Now it has, like, a giant area of effect when a marked enemy dies, applying marks to... Every enemy, it's pretty great. Yeah, you're looking for an easy way to kill cannibals. <laughs> Didn't even see me. Somehow did not even know what was happening, it seems. Alright. Let me just send you right over here. To the little, like, trap, I guess? I guess it's kind of a trap. I don't know. All right. I have no actual plan here. Just pretty much throw down stuff and then use that to kill enemies. Which is pretty effective. 
I'll take that. Uh, 36 versus 32. I'll take this just for the increase on the survival stuff. Not quite sure what just died there. <laughs> ah. And just sit and wait. Yeah, I mean, I got this really quality, nice electric whip and everything, and don't even need to use it. Oh, this is still considered... That's considered a ceiling? Huh. Oh, you learned something new here. That's weird. <laughs> All right. Cannibal, do you jump? <laughs> I assume that he would get stopped by the heavy turret if he tried jumping into it, but uh, didn't really get a chance to test. All right. Wait a second. Did I forget to grab the 60 cells that were in the previous? Oh, no. Uh, oh, great. I'm going to get so many comments about that. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, don't worry about it. Oh, boy. Don't worry about it. The save file is probably going to be reset by tomorrow anyway, so it doesn't really matter if I upgrade. <laughs> well, just about anything. Eh, give it one more try. Not using the Hulk Toes bow. I guess that's going to be something more for the assassin. Yeah. Not a problem. I mean, that was kind of what I was expecting to mostly use it on anyway, when I initially grabbed it. Yep. Man, I can't, I can't believe I missed out on, yeah, 60 cells? Uh, nearly 70, if it wasn't 70? Oh, boy. Also get that heavy crossbow doing a little knockback, which is great for this area because you can knock enemies off really easy. But as of right now, I'm going to say it's like, I'm feeling pretty confident in this run. I mean, dead cells, of course. Confidence doesn't mean much of anything because runs turn on a dime. But hey, as of right now, I think it's going pretty good. And what is going on down there? Ah, eh, whatever. What's in here? I like that even though they don't really need it, if they still have like the little um, the little cannibal swords next to the door here. Anything? Ah, whatever. Not a big deal. I honestly think that the makeup I have right now is... Oh, okay. Is just fine for fighting the assassin. Wow, 50. That is not an insignificant amount. Oh, yeah, and here's where the third one... Uh, the three-cell door would be. But that's not happening. Don't even need to get near him. All right. So many shops. <laughs> All right, key's got to be like right here. Oh, well, first I'll take this, sir. Oh, of course. All right. Oh, this would actually be a good time to see if I can kind of jump at me. Yeah. Well, it would have been a good time to decide to jump at me to see if the heavy turret would stop him. Whoa! No, Bombardier. That was a good guess as to where I was going to be. Frontline shield? Eh, not bad. You could probably actually uh, pair a... Where am I going here? Down here, I guess. You could probably actually pair a ceiling turret with a kind of 
frontline shield combo and get some pretty good results out of it. Just kind of working on being defensive against the assassin while... Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> Oak those both uh, eight or seven. No. Damn check minus 25%. Yeah, okay. Ah. Um, should I take the extra health? Yeah, screw it. I'll take the extra health. I don't think I'm hurting for damage at all, really. Hmm. And here are 40 cells. Man, you can get a whole ton of them in these areas. Yeah, I think, like, hitting up Clock Tower and Slumbering Sanctuary is going to be, like, the, the way to get cells. Oh, boy. By the way, where's the Clockmaker's key? Just, just wondering. Because I feel like I should have probably gotten it by now. Just saying. Gotta be, no? Well, I guess I'm getting powered up even more, but like, that's not really what I need. Finally. And I'm out. Go fight a boss. Or, not quite. Where is it? Here we go. Yeah, let's go fight a boss. Even with... Now, bosses are also affected by, you know, being more difficult or whatever. Because they do get extra health, and I don't know, but I think they do extra damage. So, well, I suppose I might as well. Like that uh, healing isn't going to do me any good. So let's go here, here. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's see if I might, I don't know if I'm going to be far enough away from the assassin for that to actually activate but it could be good I don't know let's take a look so yeah there's like I don't know maybe that might be far enough away well let's see assassin hi right. Look at this. Okay. All right. Well, that's it's pretty good so far. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, it was the assassin fight, I guess. Uh, 218. Yeah, whatever. Just get the explosive lure up. And the flamethrower turret. One that I'm also still not super impressed with. Hooray! And still nothing. Well, I guess that's it. So for just uh, two runes active, not too difficult. I could definitely see that being a good way to kind of grind up cells. But we'll see for full runes eventually.